day long assembly session ends, government passes 14 bills. Former Telecom Minister and DMK leader Dayanidhi Maran is questioned by the CBI in the 2G scam. Tamil Nadu Assembly passes a bill making way for levying 25% tax on IPL matches and 30% on DTH services. While train services limp back to normalcy, the train driver who reportedly caused the collision is in critical condition. Tamil Nadu Assembly expresses condolence for victims of the Arakonam train mishap that left nine dead. A number of trains are rescheduled, throwing travel plans out of gear. Justice Sampath has been appointed to probe the police firing in Paramakudi on September 11. Hello and welcome to Late Night News. I am Anuradha Anand, bringing you the headlines of what's happening across the country first. After outrage over the paltry reward of 25,000 rupees, Sports Minister announces 1.5 lakh reward for each player of the Indian hockey team. Indian groups could be behind the recent attacks in India, says the Home Minister, says cross-border terrorism alone isn't to blame. A fresh case is filed in the game scam. Chairs worth 1800 rupees were bought for 17,000 rupees each for the Siri Fort Stadium. Swami Agnivesh was too close to certain ministers in the UPA, so for now he is no longer part of my team, Anna Hazare tells NDTV. A day before uh, Anna Dure's birthday on September 15th, the last day of the current assembly session was a busy one with the MLAs passing 14 bills in just over eight hours. In his concluding remark, the speaker claimed that the assembly session had successfully protected democracy, something that uh, some of the 234 MLAs may dispute. Pratiksha Ram Kumar reports. 177 hours of arguments, 54 demands and 23 bills passed. Most importantly, 36 hours devoted to the opposition party speakers. Sounds quite democratic. Not everyone would agree. While the DMK members walking out and boycotting the proceedings was a daily occurrence, today the assembly witnessed an all-party walkout. For the first time, the ruling AIA-DMK's allies, the Communist Party of India and the Marxist Communist Parties walked out, in tune with the DMK. Kawal tu rey adikarin buat dia hati mereka lada beri kian, bahagian kandangan tu kuriya itu matu malah. Ia pergi pergi orang tu pakai kucu orang nak terbentuk di awas ini, gilai kian bahagian ini anggal dengan nara terus pelik pelak berumur. Saman dah pergi orang kuriya. Kawal tu rey adikarin ini tu nada beri kian tu, awak kalau tar kali ke pandi ni ikam sejap pada bentuk bentuk ini yang kami sedikit insan bagi kita pergi orang. Ia bodoh kudu orang mana kudiya sampah betai. Yang dah nyai mau mila mal awas ini mau mila mal. Arang getiye. Polis adi hari kali ini, nara budi kerja kerja bentuk perkara ini, ada ni ikam sejauh bentuk, iran da perkara ke, bodoh mana nasti itu kudu kerja bentuk, inda segala benda yang kalau ini, suddi kati, muda la macam kerja bentuk, yirut, uria nara budi kerja bentuk bentuk beri urut orang kahar kerja bentuk diri mana tekun tu bentuk, anu madi marutta karan tinal, ada kandi ke kudiya wakil eh, indre marxist komunis kerja, beri nara budi sejauh kerja. While the speaker claimed that he had given the opposition a record 36 hours of time, this assembly session is more likely to be remembered for its walkouts. Because the big question is, can the current opposition parties such as the DMD and the Communists be considered as opposition at all? In Chennai, Pratiksha Ram Kumar for NDTV Hindu. The Tamil Nadu government is levying an entertainment tax on DTH services and cricket tournaments conducted by the Indian Premier League. Now DTH providers will have to pay as tax 30% of the charges they collect from customers excluding service tax. The IPL will have to pay 25% of the money they pay the state cricket board as admission fee to conduct the matches. This takes place with immediate effect. It may be recalled that the state government rolled out its Arusu Cable Corporation on September 2nd widely touted as an affordable alternative for the common man, while DTH is assumed to be patronized by only the well-to-do and the creme de la creme of society. 
The decision to tax IPL tournaments may end up in costing the cricket fan a little more ultimately, but uh, the IPL has been a popular event here for obvious reasons. The Chennai Super Kings are the champions. Reacting to demands of a few MLAs, the Tamil Nadu government in an amendment to the Tamil Nadu Payment of Salaries Act passed in 1951 has announced an increase in their salaries. MLAs will now get anywhere between 50,000 to 55,000 rupees a month. Ministers, leaders and speakers will also get a hike. So they will receive anywhere between 27,000 to 32,000 rupees. MLA's pension too is expected to increase. All this will cost the exchequer 4.2 crores and will be taken from the consolidated fund of the state. The Tamil Nadu government has uh, appointed retired High Court Judge K. Sampath to inquire into the uh, violence in which uh, seven people were killed at Paramakudi a few days ago. Violence erupted after the arrest of John Pandian who was prevented from reaching Paramakudi to take part in the death anniversary of Emmanuel Shekharan, a Dalit leader. The inquiry commission will go into the causes and circumstances leading to the opening of fire resulting in death and injuries during the violence. The commission will also probe whether all formalities were followed before resorting to firing. The commission is expected to complete the inquiry and submit the report to the state government in two months. News from the Tamil Nadu Assembly, the state government has announced labour SOPs. The employment exchange buildings in 10 districts including Tanjavur, Tutukudi and Kadalur will be renovated at a cost of 15 crore rupees. People who now want to apply for jobs need not go directly to the employment exchange. An online job portal will be set up where people can register. HR executives of private companies can access the posted profiles. There will also be special placement assistance cells set up to help students get jobs in private sector companies. Biometric ID cards will be issued to the unorganized sector. Registered laborers in the unorganized sector who were getting a pension of 500 rupees a month will now get 1000 rupees. In a bid to discourage child labor, parents of children will get 500 rupees a month till their children complete their higher education. Jiva Labourers Institute will get new guest houses at the cost of 30 lakh rupees for trade union workers and leaders in DMS. In a bid to promote better safety precautions in companies, the state has announced state safety awards ranging from 2,500 to 5,000 rupees. Now let's look at some statistics pertaining to 19 days in the Tamil Nadu Assembly. 177 hours of arguments overall with the opposition speaking for 36 hours. The first time the opposition has spoken for so long in the state. Also, this is the first time the chief minister attended every session. On two days, the assembly session went on for more than eight hours. 54 demands were heard over 19 days. 23 bills were passed with 14 bills passed just today. Hansraj Saxena, who was the Sun Pictures COO when he was arrested, has been released on bail. Saxena was behind bars for two months on charges of cheating and criminal intimidation. Also for the first time, former Telecom Minister and DMK leader Dayanandi Maran has been questioned by the CBI in the 2G scam. Sources say that he was questioned today for over four, five hours where he denied all allegations that he intimidated Aircel into selling its stake. His brother Kalanadi Maran was questioned on Monday. Earlier, uh, Sunetra Chaudhary, who has been tracking this case very closely, joined us to give more details. Dhanadi Maran's questioning took place today. Uh, see that uh, called him and he came and was questioned for over five hours. His brother, Karanidhi Maran, owner of Sun TV, who has also allegations pending in the same case, was questioned on Monday, also in Delhi. Uh, what we know from the questioning is that he was, of course, asked about his tenure, 2004-2007. That's actually part of a preliminary investigation that the CBI is doing into the entire 2G 
spectrum allocation during 2001 to 2007. It's not an FIR yet. Uh, CDI hasn't even said there's any criminal culpability yet. But uh, the charges against Bayanadi Maran, former telecom minister, are quite serious. Uh, he faces allegations of, of having delayed, purposely delaying ASL's license, 2G license, and only granting it once ASL changed ownership and was sold to Maxis. And so Shiva Shankaran, the owner of ASL, founder owner of ASL, has alleged that he was forced to sell his stake. And the quid pro quo, he's accused of then investing Maxis, his sister group, then invested 800 crores into Kalanadi Maran's Sun TV. So the allegation is of quid pro quo against Dan Vimaran, that he forced him to sell it, and only after he sold it, he gave the 2G license, and in return, he got uh, an investment for his brother's thing. This is something that uh, Dan Vimaran has been uh, denying right from day one since these allegations surfaced, but uh, this is what he also said in his police statement, the 161 statement which is recorded today and on Monday. They both denied that. What the CBI think, what CBI says, they will study the statement. However, they've already told the Supreme Court they haven't found any evidence of coercion. However, they have said that just by looking at the and studying the way the licenses were given, there were delays in giving the ASL license. Now, was it valid or not? Was it legitimate or not? That's something that's part of the investigation. Even after 24 hours of the Arakonam train tragedy, Railways is yet to find out who was at fault. Stay tuned, we'll bring you more on the other side.